staff to moderate the questions, but I want the whole delegation and non Texans to uh, participate. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, what do you say to Dems who argue that um, House Representatives, House Republicans have no evidence that Mayorkas actually committed a crime, a high crime and misdemeanor worthy of um, impeachment? And what do you hope to get out of those hearings? Well, I'd say a failure to enforce the laws of the nation. Uh, but if you look at the Founding Fathers, it didn't have to violate a criminal statute. In fact, at the Constitutional Convention, they didn't have a lot of federal laws on the books. And uh, what it boils down to is what, uh, under British common law, was a breach of the public trust. A, uh, basically, something that is so injurious to the state that it called for an impeachment. So I think his uh, dereliction of duty, his failure uh, to uphold the laws of the nation, and his failure uh, to the public and, and violating his own oath of office to protect the nation from all enemies, both foreign and domestic, has been violated to the extent. Um, you talk about injury to a state. Texas has never seen so much injury as we do today. So I think it's high time. I think this man is, uh, again, the architect of this, um, and he has what's coming to him. Uh, sure. How do you feel about Senator James Langford citing an election year as one of the reasons why Republicans are starting to back away from the deal he's negotiating in the Senate? Well, you know, I, you know I, I applaud anybody trying to fix the system and trying to uh, pass additional laws. I've done that in my course of my career, and you know, border immigration is tough. But the fact is, as has been said before, it's the rescission of these executive orders that has created this crisis. He has created by executive fiat a crisis down at the border. I'll give you a good example. Do you know the Remain in Mexico law is a 30-year-old statute that the Trump administration found and decided, hey, this may actually work. And you know what it did? It didn't require legislative action. There are plenty of laws under the INA that pertain to this, and I if he could just reverse those policies back to the prior administration, and that is in catch and release, remain in Mexico, build a wall, uh, we'd come a long ways without any more congressional action. If the Senate passes something with significant policy changes, I think we'll take a look at that. These, yeah, hey, Max. Uh, yeah, Speaker Johnson has said that the Senate bill is dead on arrival in the House. It seems like you're striking a different tone. Can you talk about your, how you approach that? Do you think you might consider this on like leadership maybe? Well, I think, you know, he has a little bit of a preview that, say, a lot of us don't. Uh, but I don't think he's going to put anything on the floor that compromises um, what we stand for and, and makes the situation worse. So we don't know exactly what's going to come out of the Senate. We do know that these over 60 executive actions, if reversed, could change everything down there. Um, and it would change it overnight without one legislative action. I, I wish they would deal with, um, you know, political asylum, right? Uh, but the, the president can change that overnight if he wants to. Yep. All right, last question. Uh, thank you. Just last hour, the Democrats were in here, and Congressman Goldman said if the Republicans are going to open the door to impeach a secretary because they don't like how that secretary is doing his job, what happens if there's another child separation policy? And he says this sets a precedent to impeach for policy disagreements. Uh, does it? Does it set that precedent? It's, it's not a policy disagreement. It's a man who is responsible, in my, in my uh, judgment, for aiding and abetting a criminal enterprise in the United States. I mean, something that has allowed 8 million people to enter, try to enter this country. It's allowed 300 uh, people on the terror watch list. We don't know how many more got in. You know, the FBI, Director Ray, you know, 19 hijackers took down the World Trade Center. For God's sakes, how many more have gotten in under this man's reckless policies? And finally, the fentanyl deaths, to me, it, that's enough. When I look at a parent in the eye whose son or daughter didn't wake up the next day, um, they deserve better. And this may not go anywhere in the Senate, but for God's sake, we're sending a message loud and clear on behalf of the American people that we disapprove of this man. Yes, in the policies, but if you look back to the founders, dereliction of duty, breach of public trust. Um, those of us who live in a border state 
see a breach of public trust every single day. No one sees it more than Monica, who I thought gave excellent remarks. We see that breach of public trust on our board every single day, and it's time that we stand up and, and make a bold statement. To the first cabinet member impeached since the Ulysses S. Grant administration. Thanks, and that should send a bold message.